Um, this is Stacia, and we're going to take a look at this Blitz game. That was pretty interesting. It features a middle game plan that I'm interested in playing, but I don't really understand it yet. <laughs> so let's have a look and see what we can learn from this. Okay, so I had the black pieces against a 1687. This is three minute, two second increment blitz on chess.com. They opened with e4, so I go e5. Okay, we know these moves, right? Now, bishop b b5 is the Spanish, or also known as the Roy Lopez. I like to play a6 here, which is the Morphe defense. And basically, we're saying, do you really want to take this knight? Because if they take and try to win the pawn, we have this queen d4 move, which actually forks the pawn and the knight. And those positions are, are good for us, really. So if they are going to take... Um, like this they generally will just castle or something like that and play the exchange roy lopez okay but in this game he simply retreated the bishop i went knight to f6 and he played d3 okay so <laughs> um if you're one of my students or a viewer then you know that i'm not a big fan of d3 but of course it's a good move it's just solid it doesn't um doesn't fight for advantage the way other moves do but it, it kind of does in a way because you can slow play this as white you really can you can still get a decent attack on the king side and stuff like that so i always want to figure out how to deal with this okay the first thing to know about it is that it protects the pawn um, in these structures, when white defends their pawn it's time to defend our pawn as well like they actually are threatening this now so um so I played b5, which is probably the right move. Let me see. It is computer likes it. And I'm going to open the opening book as well. Okay, so opening book gives d6 as the main move, but b5 is like played almost as much. So, okay, bishop b3, retreating the bishop, bishop b7, castle. All right, so I just castle now. Now, this is where I went for a different plan than usual. So I would tell you that normally I wouldn't go bishop e7. I like to put my bishop on the most active square on c5, unless I have good reason. So I did kind of have a good reason. Um, the reason I wanted to not play this way is, okay, let's just say like if they castle, um, I would probably go d6. And let's say they go, you know, rook e1 or or actually they should go c3. All right, maybe I'd retreat the bishop or something. Let's say they go, actually they should probably stop me from pinning them. Let's go h3, I'll go h6. Let's say they go rook e1. And they're protecting this pawn and they're getting ready for d4. This is a, you know, of course, a very typical plan. Um, sometimes here I feel like I don't like these positions that much. Like, um, okay, comp or I see there's a game with knight e7, which is probably what I would play. Um, because I typically do go for this plan of knight e7, knight g6. And the idea is that if they play d4, which I'm not even sure they can here. I guess they can. Um, then I'm going to meet that with knight g6, protecting the pawn. Because notice here, like, they actually are threatening to take. Right? Like, we... It's only protected once, but then once the knight comes to g6, it's protected twice. So we're okay. But I don't know. It's like I never really know how to play from here. Um, I'm not 100% um, happy with the positions I get. So I tried something different that I've seen, and that's what I want to analyze. So I went bishop b7 here, and the idea is that I'm still trying to play d5 in one move. So that, that's what I'm trying to do with this. Like, I just want to castle and play rook e8, bishop f8, and just, or maybe d5 sooner if I can get it. So I think that's what happens. So after castles, okay, I castle. And then he goes c3. Okay, so white's going for their their stuff. You know, they're, they're going to try to get d4 in. And at, in this moment, I play d5. Okay, and I was pretty happy with this. I'm like, well, isn't it nice that I get d5 in? Um, so, and I've seen one of my students play like this. And, and every time she does, um, it's Olivia. Um, 
I'm always like, you know, I like I like it. Like I want to play that way too. Like I like that plan. It just seems easier to me than the other way, than the knight e7, knight g6. I mean, of course, it depends on the position. <laughs> but here, I thought this is interesting. So okay, so I go d5. So now if I go back to the opening book, let's just see what the masters do here. Wow. So guess what? Bishop e7 is the main move here. Bishop c5 is second uh, most popular. And and basically the stats are like almost the same on them. It looks like white wins slightly more. Um, and black draws slightly more but with, uh, with bishop c5. But it's so close it doesn't really matter. And if you ask the computer, I mean, it, it basically says... I mean, computer wants d6, which to me doesn't make any sense. Like, don't I want to try to get this in in one move? Um, but then I'm also going to block the bishop in. Like, so uh, d6 doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Okay, I, I can't help it, you guys. I have to see what the computer wants here. Like, let's say we castle. What does the computer want? Okay, it wants knight a5 or bishop b7. Okay, let's do this one. Let's go c3. What does it want? Yeah, it keeps wanting knight a5. So, well, it it like flashes knight a5 and then it gives a different move. Okay, so it gives that. Let's go here. Um, now computer definitely wants knight a5. Okay, so that, their idea was knight a5 and I think they're going for that. I forget if they call it the Rubenstein structure or something because after bishop c2, we can go c5. Yeah, it does want this. It wants to play like this. And I think the knight's just going to come right back to c6. I've done this before in games. I wasn't um, that comfortable playing this way either. But we are getting stuff on the queen side. And we are, um, you know, stopping d4 or at least making it that so we can open the position. So, okay. So we just learned two different middle games. Let's see this one though. So d5, d5. All right, so they took, and they probably should take, because um, I'm attacking their pawn twice. I mean, if they just go um, rook e1, I'd probably just go ahead and take on e4. seems like that is correct. And if they take here, okay, I like this much better than what I would get in the other positions, because now let's just say they, oops, sorry, it's black's turn. I would probably trade queens, letting the rook come to d1, but hey, look at their queen side. It's not developed at all. And I feel like we can easily just play, I was going to say bishop b7. Yeah, computer says that's fine. I just want to connect my rooks and challenge that d file as soon as possible. That's what I want to do. Um, and then if they, you know, do this, pinning us, okay, just h6. Computer actually wants to take. I mean, that seems weird to me. Do they want to take and invade? Is, is this the point? Um, I guess it is. But then we go knight a5 or something. Okay, they could win a pawn, right? <laughs> okay, but we win a pawn too. <laughs> yeah, okay, this is getting into a computer line, but... Okay, so let's just continue with the game now. After knight takes... Um, yeah, they took, and I just take with a knight, right? That was my whole thing. Like, I'm supporting d5. I could play d5. So if they want to capture, I just trade. Okay, now some interesting things happen. Because I start to realize that this pawn is actually not all that easy to defend, I thought, because I can't play... I kind of want to play f6, but of course that's illegal, <laughs> so we can't do that. It's pinned. So I decided to just pin this knight, which I thought was interesting. And after h3 and bishop h5, now I was starting to see some weird stuff because I thought g4 might be a good move. Like after g4, they actually will win this pawn. And then I actually was planning, well, I'll just show you with arrows what I wanted. Like I thought g4 here. Knight takes, and what I would love to do is go knight takes, rook takes, and play here. But of course, my knight's hanging, and it's it's even attacked twice. 
so I don't have any tricks with like bishop h2 because it's attacked twice so um yeah but something told me that this weakening of their king side would benefit me in some way so computer says you know white's like a tiny bit better here like not even not even point one better um so they did take i take take okay so what do we do the knights attacked oh my gosh i should yeah there's a martial move you can play here i should have known to play this you can just play c6 and play it like a martial now i should have known this i didn't i didn't see that i actually decided to retreat the knight i mean this is fine too but i think i like c6 better c6 just saying like look i'm, I'm gonna do this like and then you know and then queen h4 and then i'm going to play against the king it, it looks a lot like a marshal and and that makes sense right because i went bishop b7 d5 and that that is what you do in the marshal so i really am thinking about switching to like this middle game plan when i play these positions i think i just understand it better and i like it better Okay, yeah, and this is a this is a mistake apparently taking this pawn. Okay, I thought this was fine and yeah, except they played this move. Turns out they shouldn't play this. The way for white to play is to take the knight. What's going on with this? Let's try to figure it out. <laughs> Why should they take the knight? I really don't know. <coughs> okay, this happens in the game, so we'll save that. But why should they take the knight? Take. Let's say I take. Ooh. Ooh. They have rook d5, don't they? It's supported by the bishop, and then that attacks. That forks, right? So is that that must be good. Yep, it's rook d5. Okay, I did not see that during the game. But I feel like that's a good way to analyze with the engine. You know, like like I could see that it it had something. Like I see that it was, there was like plus one, but I, and I saw it was bishop takes, but I didn't know why. So instead of just blindly like following the computer engine, you know, we tried to figure it out. I think that's a good way to use the engine. All right, so anyway, they took here though. So, okay, well, this is my idea. Take care, take care. And I thought I didn't fully calculate any of this. I mean, I have 30 seconds left. <laughs> um, but I just thought, okay, I've got this. My rooks are coming in. I felt like I've at least got play. And I still liked that their pieces were not coordinated here. So I attacked the queen. I didn't think I should do this yet because maybe they just go here. This is what I thought. Yeah, and the engine agrees, like, white's better here. Um, I mean, they are up a pawn. So I did this one. Okay, they took there. I'm not sure why they did this here. Maybe because they wanted to lure my queen away. They didn't want to allow that check. Um, but... Hmm. Yeah, and I guess they're trying to trick me, too. Because I can't really do this because then they go here. And I don't have this check because of the bishop. And if I go rookie eight, I think they just retreat. And they're just like up a piece, right? <laughs> like, like they're just up material. So they just win that knight on f6. So, okay. So... This happened in the game and then just queen f1. So clearly they were a little scared here, but that's a passive move, you know? So I thought I would just double rooks. Now I'm really low on time here, so we won't analyze too deeply, but okay, a4, I decided to do this. Um, they really wanted to get their knight out. That's why they played a4, I think. Okay, let's just come in, deck the pawn. I want to put pressure here. wonder if I was losing at any point yeah apparently they they can take here I certainly was was worried about it they did do that yeah I just I'm just like well I'm all in let's let's just like get them here if we can apparently I'm lost though 
Um, they can just play queen g2 here. Rook e one's another way. They can just... Rook e1, really? Oh, rook e1. Ooh, threatening this and what else, though? I'm not sure. Hmm. Okay. But in that game, they pushed the pawn, and now it just gets interesting because now I take... Check, I take the queen, they take, I take, they take. Okay, so now I've got a queen, but they have a knight, a bishop, and a rook. Their pieces aren't very coordinated, though. And the computer says this is a draw. I mean, I guess I have an extra pawn, too, on the king side. So computer just says equal. But this is a very interesting position. Okay, I'm playing very fast here. I see I could have taken a pawn. I'm just trying not to lose my queen. That was my main thing. And I want to check and harass that king. Okay, so I'm forcing that king up the board, which maybe isn't the best idea. But yeah, finally I get a fork. So that's that's really all you got all you can do with the queen. And like I think what white should do is try to coordinate their pieces, just get them all defended. Like Like, I don't know, could they just go here? I'm not totally sure because I might be able to attack the pin piece, but it won't be easy. So what should they do? I mean, they could go knight e3? Maybe knight e3. I don't know, but they want to, they need to keep all their pieces like defending each other. And then my queen won't have much to do. That's what I thought they should do. But instead, I got a fork. But even a queen versus a rook and a knight is not always clear. In this case, it might be because I've got too many pawns now. I might even be able to sack the queen for the rook at some point, which is kind of what happens, I think. Yeah, so, so hey, I didn't lose my queen. That was the main thing. I knew if I didn't lose my queen, I'd probably win. Lost that pawn. I didn't want to lose that, but okay. Now they're really low on time. They're lower on time than me. That's not that's not normal. Okay, now I'm pushing my pawns. Okay, and finally I get their rook. I mean they're they're just blundered in time pressure. I know because I do that all the time. And now we sack and you know, queen. And checkmate. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed the analysis. It was really about those middle game plans. Um, I'm just gonna I always like to recap at the end. Um, so I guess what I learned about this, and I'll have to look at some more games, and of course this takes further study, but I think what I learned about this is I like this plan. I like this, I like what I'm gonna call the Olivia plan because <laughs> I've seen Olivia do this. And I, I think I just like it because it resulted in a more martial like position. I don't know if it always does, but even if it just has the chance to, I love those positions. And I know what I'm doing in those positions. I feel like at actual tournaments, that's going to be a better approach for me. But I'm I'm going to have to study this a bit more. So, so yeah, this Bishop B7, like immediate D5 plan instead of what I was talking about earlier with D6, but the Bishop's on C5, and then you go Knight E7, Knight G6. But we also have that... Uh, plan that Stockfish reminded me of, which is you go, you can go bishop e7 and d6 even. You can do this and then try to get this early knight a5 so that when the pawn's on c3, the bishop retreats. Now, if they don't move their bishop, you definitely take it. You definitely take it. This bishop is better than this knight. So that, that's a, a good trade for us. Um, but if they don't, you get out of the way of c5 and you can actually come back. And then I know there's all kinds of plans on the queen side from there. So we probably play on the queen side and we clamp down on d4. So anyway, I hope that was um, instructive. I think it was for me. Um, and um, yeah, I'll be back with more chess. Okay, thank you. Bye.